The reading of the Gospel this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew 15, 21 through 28. Matthew tells the story of Jesus and the Canaanite woman who comes for mercy. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from that region came out and cried, Have mercy on me, sovereign son of David. My daughter is severely possessed by a demon. But Jesus did not answer her a word. And the disciples came and begged Jesus, saying, Send her away. For she is crying after us. And Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before Jesus, saying, Sovereign, help me. And Jesus answered, It is not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Sovereign. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their owner's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. And God had understanding to the reading of this gospel. Amen. Please be seated. During this past week, there were a couple of church members <coughs> sending email back and forth about whether or not we'd be able to be back in time and who was going to be preaching if we were not here. And David wrote back, the pastors like to preach on the gospel readings. And he quoted the, shared the gospel scripture numbers and he said, that's not a scripture I want to tackle. I can't wait to see what they do with it. <laughs> so, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Whose faith was really rocked? Today's gospel lesson from Matthew can be discussed in the blissful beauty of Jesus performing just one more miracle. Just part of a day's work. But I want us to take a look at this passage different today. Jesus had traveled outside of the realm of the Jewish faith and traditions for the first and the only time, according to the Gospels. Jesus went to be alone. He wanted time to prepare himself and the disciples for what the final chapter of his life would be, that of the cross. He was pursued by this woman, a very persistent, irritating woman. She wanted Jesus to grant to her daughter a healing. And yet Jesus didn't want to. He just flat in that shocking. He just didn't want to. He was, after all, sent by his heavenly parent to save the Jews and to heal and convert them. Nowhere was it written, nor was it expected, that he should grant a miracle of healing for this woman who was actually from a society that was the arch enemy of all the Jewish people at the time. This story is also shared in the Gospel of Mark. Yet Mark's version is perhaps just a little kinder. At least in the Gospel of Mark, the ill child was home in bed and Je when Jesus basically compared the woman and her child to a dog. It is speculated in Matthew's account that the little girl was standing right there clinging to her mother's dress. <clears throat> After discussion with the woman, and basically a debate as to whether he should heal the little girl. It was then that Jesus' eyes lit up. And then he said, because of your faith, the child has been cured. 
So whose faith really was challenged that day? The Greek woman knew her stuff. She knew who Jesus was. What Jesus could do. And that if she showed him the faith she had, he would not be able to deny her request. <clears throat> However, if we look at Jesus, he was the one that really thought that he was not there for her. He had to save his life-saving miracles and powers for the Jewish people for whom he came. I believe that Jesus was the one whose faith was rocked that day. I feel that it was that woman who showed Jesus that he truly was called to minister to all people. Jesus was called to love, heal, and forgive even the vilest of our enemies and offenders. It was this woman's faith that gives each of us an equal footing to receive the gifts of God. It is much like what we are seeing today in our world, in our societies. In the Nashville statement of the evangelical leaders this past week, condemning LGBT communities, relationships, and our calls to vocations, even their disdain for women being in ministry. We need to be this woman that Jesus met that day. We need to know our stuff. We need to show our faith so that their faith is rocked when they see we are created equally in the eyes of God. In this society, we are, in this so-called white privilege, we consider the norm. We must show society that we are all equal in the same protections and rights that are granted for the elite. If we stand strong in our faith, hold on with courage to our convictions, and show these things to the world, then we, truly, then we are truly a people worthy of all the gifts that God wants to freely bestow upon us. We must be willing to challenge the faith of ourselves and of each person we meet at times. No matter what we face in this world, just as that woman who pursued Jesus that day, if we stand in awe and respect of God, show mercy to all around us, and humbly ask our God for what we need, we will not be disappointed. That woman rocked Jesus' faith that day. It's time for us as an LGBT community to rock the world's faith again. I assume most of you have heard about the national statement by the elite evangelical leaders, some who are Trump's faith supporters and advisors and on his advisory committee. One who lives in Fayetteville, Arkansas, Pastor of Cross Church. <clears throat> I didn't die. And I said that right here in Fayetteville. <clears throat> I want to read to you a very important response. An MCC response to the national statement. This is written by pastoral intern Tori Jameson of the MCC of Greater St. Louis, St. Louis, Missouri. We are not a member of MCC. I have a special place in my heart for MCC because that's where I was ordained. That's where I truly found a relationship with Jesus Christ. This may seem lengthy to you, but I think it's important that it be boldly proclaimed from behind a pulpit so that everybody can hear what we believe. Article 1. We affirm that marriages, marriage takes on many forms from many different persons, both within the scriptures, Old and New Testaments alike. 
and through the current age, we affirm that the right of all persons to marry and to have their marriage blessed in a religious institution and witnessed by the divine, however they may, may define marriage, institutions, and the divine. We affirm that Christian marriage takes many forms of covenant between persons, Christ and the church, and that each of these forms is holy. We deny that the biblical witness, the lived life of Jesus, and the forward march of the church reflect marriage as solely between one man and one woman. We deny that God's love and covenantal blessing is bounded to, to one type of relationship at the expense of all others. We deny that God is not merely as creative in God's expressions of love and commitment as those who claim to be the children and followers of God. We affirm that God's revealed will, <coughs> will for all adults who choose to participate in sexual activity is that safe, sane, and consensual sex between equals is welcome. We affirm the right of all people to define their own sexual boundaries and their right to demand those boundaries be respected and affirmed. We affirm the right for adults to express themselves with their bodies and to not be shamed for their sexuality. We deny that the only sex worth talking about is vaginal intercourse, choosing instead to name that sex as multifaceted and complex. We deny that chastity until marriage is, the, is always the healthiest and best choice for con consenting unmarried adults, though it may be the best choice for some, if freely chosen. We deny that for the people of all time that a marriage covenant requires strict allegiance to a prescribed and exclusive relationship and way of sexual expression. We affirm that every person, whatever their sex, whatever their gender, is made in the image of God. We affirm the holy journey of self-discovery and experimental expression and commit to enthusiastic affirmation of our own and other sex and gender identities. We affirm that gender and gender expression does not correlate to dignity or worth. We deny that God is ignorant of transgender people and the rich tapestries of experience. We deny that God is limited to boxes called male and female in God's creation of people. We affirm that gender roles are a patriarchal tool of control and are sinful when required of whole communities and demanded of individuals. We affirm that human good and human flourishing has nothing to do with conforming to gender roles. We affirm that the patriarchy is an intersectional problem and one that cannot be fought alone. We deny that gender roles are biblical and thereby monolithic. We deny that gender roles have remained static. We deny that gender roles, <coughs> we deny that God is anything but pleased when God's people express their gender in any way that feels right to them. We affirm that the right of all persons to feel comfortable in their bodies including transgender persons. We affirm that science and medicine are gifts of God. We affirm the right of persons to pursue the best science and medicine for all aspects of their health, including reproductive health and physiological health. We affirm that trans and intersex people have as much God-appointed right 
to health and bodily autonomy as anyone else. We deny that being trans or intersex is a cancer or anomaly in need of a cure, while supporting anyone's rights to medical care, including gender confirmation interventions. We deny that trans and intersex people must use science or medicine to conform to a standard or change anything about themselves. We affirm that intersex people are images of the divine, no matter how they present themselves to the world. We affirm the right of intersex people to love whoever and however they love without conforming to any standard they do not wish to conform to. We affirm the right of intersex people to be full members of religious traditions and that they and their bodies are deserving of respect and honor. We deny that intersex people are disordered. We deny that intersex people are eunuchs to be othered and then pitied. We deny that conforming one's genitals to some standard is in any way related to Christian obedience. We affirm the self-conception of having inherent worth, being loved by God, and belonging to a family or community should be defined as God's holy purposes in creation and redemption as revealed in the scripture. We affirm that homosexuality, bi and pansexual, asexuality, transgender, and non-binary gender, polyamory, and any other form of queer identity are as much valid and holy self-conceptions consistent with God's holy purposes as cisgender, heterosexual, and monogamous identities. We deny that an imposition of a strict gender binary of male and female being and loving was God's idea in creation. As such, demands cause harm to God's people and God's church. We affirm that the same gender loving persons may live a rich and fruitful life through the faith in Jesus Christ and in many other religious and ethical traditions we affirm that homosexual, bi, and pansexual, sexually fluid, and all those who may have loved someone or shared a sex or gender identity can proclaim their love as natural and a part of the goodness of God's creation. And we affirm that doing justice, including communication, consent, and covenant and relationships, is part of the gospel, part of the gospel call to purity and holiness in life. We deny the false gospel of patriarchy. We deny enacted heterosexual attraction as the measure by which one is deemed to have a pure life. We affirm that marriage is not the end goal of every healthy relationship, though it may be for some. We affirm healthy sexuality both exclusive to and outside of marriage covenants. We deny that marriage is an institution which will shelter a person from sexual sin. We deny that homosexuality is itself, is itself sexual immorality. We deny that sex acts outside of vaginal intercourse are themselves, by definition, sexually immoral. We affirm that the LGBTQ plus persons are voices and the witnesses and the witness of scripture in the ever continuing march of Christian history. We affirm that some of God's rainbow children 
have always been and will always be called to a life of Christian faithfulness and as witness to the gospel, including as clergy and religious leaders. We deny that the rights of all human beings to a healthy and affirming sexuality and gender is something on which we can be silent or agree to disagree. To be silent is to be in sin. We affirm our duty to speak, to speak the truth in love at all times, including when we speak to one another about the ways in which our narrow view of God's creation hurts us all and our mutual subjugation under patriarchy and gender and sexual legalism. We deny any obligation to consider theological and social positions that, that are trans-exclusive, anti-gay, requiring a gender role, and otherwise causing pain to gender and sexual minorities. We affirm that the grace of God in Christ gives transforming power, and that this power enables a follower of Jesus to put to, to, put to death the siren song of the sins of legalism, patriarchy, homophobia, transphobia, and willful ignorance. We affirm that to walk in, man, in a manner worthy of the Lord is to walk in the full embrace of all God's children. We deny that sexual sin, where it, exists, where it exists, is a sin greater than any other. We deny the portrayal of God as presented in the Nashville Statement and endorsed by 141 male and 12 female evangelical leaders. We deny that God's rainbow children are in need of a special pardon due to their gender, sex, relationship structure, or sexual orientation. We affirm that God has created trans people and has created cis people. We affirm that trans people are no more inherently sinful than cis people. We affirm the inherent worth and dignity of trans people. We affirm the right of trans people not to participate in conversations that question their worth. We affirm that God has created and called good a multiplicity of sexual and gender identities. We deny that gender identity can be changed by conversion therapy. We deny alongside scientific and ethical consensus that conversion therapy is efficacious and anything but dangerous. We deny a God-ordained mandate that one's sex and gender must and should match. And we affirm that Christ Jesus entered a world populated by many kinds of people, including LGBTQ plus people, and came to overturn a political empire bent on the destruction of the most marginalized in pursuit of power. We affirm the gospel message of inclusion and all, inclusion of all, and especially the marginalized, continues to today. We affirm that as a Christian community, we must repent for our collective sins of homophobia, transphobia, patriarchy, legalism, and abandon the systems that name these sins as holy. We affirm that the feast of God's abundance is upon, is open to all who freely choose it. We affirm that if God has a body, God's arms are long enough to embrace God's rainbow children. We deny that anyone is beyond reach of the inclusion love of God, including the authors of the natural statement. We deny 
their statement as anything but sin and intentional harm. We denounce the national statement as anathema to Christian love and the continuing health of the church universal. God, we are your people, the work of your hands. Heal those who are wounded. Touch the people in pain. Cleanse those who are sin-filled. Warm those who are cold. Help us to know, you, know your love through Jesus and through the Spirit. Help us to lift up that love and show it to all. Help us to build love on justice and justice on love. Help us to believe mightily, hope joyfully, and love divinely. Renew us that we, that we may help renew the face of the earth. Amen.